how is climate change impacting coffee quality? What does the totality of evidence suggest? Can coffee be seen as an indicator species for climate change? And specifically, what are the effects of different abiotic stressors linked to climate change on the secondary metabolites of coffee plants and associated sensory profiles? These are the questions that I've been inspired to address with collaborators that I met at RICO in 2018. And this followed a talk that I gave at that RICO conference with regards to my long-term research in Yunnan province of China, looking at the effects of climate change on tea quality, tea from the Camellia sinensis plant. I shared about my long-term research in different types of tea management systems along a continuum of agricultural intensification from wild tea populations to tea agroforest to mixed tea systems to monocultures. I also shared about my research with tea farmers that ultimately led me to understand how tea farms were vulnerable to climate change. Farmers shared how increased precipitation variation in precipitation and increased temperatures were impacting tea quality and ultimately their livelihoods. And so this led to my long-term research and I shared data during that 2018 RICO presentation on how various secondary metabolites that determine tea quality were vulnerable to environmental factors linked to climate change. I further shared how different management factors, ways of managing tea production systems could mitigate the impacts of climate change on tea quality. Specifically, I showed how tea agroforest could mitigate the effects of increased precipitation on tea quality compared to monoculture systems. And following that 2018 talk at RICO, I met with many of you during the cocktail hour that followed, and you shared your observations in coffee systems. Some of you shared how increased rain in coffee systems is resulting in decreased coffee quality. Others shared how you observed increased temperatures in coffee farms and how this is resulting in shifts in flavor, including reduced levels of sweetness and increased astringency. Others just overall noted how the flavor profile of coffee has changed during your lifetime or during your work in the coffee sector. And others shared how there may be a need to move to higher altitudes um, where there's cooler environmental conditions that can support coffee production. And so my dialogues with all of you very much inspired me to want to understand what is known in the scientific literature regarding how climate change is impacting coffee quality. And sure enough, going on the internet, I found multiple articles as well as news stories highlighting how coffee plants are vulnerable to climate change. And some of the key trends that have been highlighted in those studies and in the news that really drove our systematic review were how coffee quality is vulnerable to shifts in temperature, to shifts in rainfall. It's vulnerable to more vulnerable at lower elevations and also has variation based on latitude. And overall, how the area suitable for high quality coffee is being reduced. And so I got together with several of you that I met at that RICO conference to conduct a systematic literature review to examine the totality of evidence regarding environmental factors and management factors associated with climate change and climate adaptation on coffee quality based on shifts in secondary metabolite profiles as well as shifts in sensory profiles. Personally, I'm very excited in secondary metabolite profiles as these are compounds that plants produce to defend themselves to various environmental factors, to various abiotic stressors. Unlike animals that can run away when they're presented with different stressors, plants are rooted in place and they've developed this really complex secondary metabolite system to defend themselves. 
And these secondary metabolites that plants are upregulating in response to stress are what we get to enjoy in our delicious cup of coffee. These are the wonderful aromatic volatile compounds, the energizing methyl xanthine compounds, the antioxidant polyphenolic compounds. So all of these compounds that we enjoy and that ultimately determine high quality coffee are very much linked and vulnerable to shifts in the environment as secondary metabolites as defense compounds. And while the large body of scientific evidence on climate change has focused on yields, just a very small amount of the evidence focuses on quality. And when we're talking about a crop such as coffee, we all know that quality is really what determines is influencing consumer preferences and ultimately the sustainability of the market. We took a systematic literature review to look at the totality of evidence. While individual case studies that are conducted in sp on specific farms or in specific countries are very informative, we can really begin to see trends when we begin to compare multiple case studies as well as when we begin to include controlled manipulative scientific experiments that really isolate specific environmental factors. And so for our systematic review, we wanted to really look at the totality of evidence so we can begin to see trends of what is known and what needs to be known, really understanding what the future research questions should be. And the systematic review process was very much born in the clinical sciences where it's important to have strong evidence in order to make claims. And so we looked at a series of systematic search terms that we input into five different databases. And ultimately we had about 1500 articles that we reviewed very systematically and ultimately came up with 73 articles that addressed our study question. I'm very excited to share the findings of this systematic review. We've been working on it for the past three years. This is unpublished data. We just submitted the manuscript. So very excited to share these findings with you. First, I wanted to share a limitation that we encountered during our systematic review process. And this has to do with limitations with regards to being able to compare between studies. So many different studies took their own approach in how they measured coffee quality, whether it was the way they measured sensory profiles or whether it was based on different secondary metabolite profiles or primary metabolite profiles, including sugars and fatty acids. And because of this variation in the way different studies approached coffee quality in the way they measured it, we actually weren't able to make quantitative assessments across studies. Rather, we were able to just make trends of increase and decrease rather than the quantity. And so this provides a really nice area in thinking about future work, that there's a need for standardized measures on multiple dimensions of what constitutes coffee quality and how these should be measured so we can have comparisons between case studies, between locations, as well as temporarily over time. So where is the most compelling evidence that we found? The most compelling evidence was found with regards to altitude. Specifically, increased altitude was found to increase in sensory attributes related to coffee quality. We looked at 18 different articles or 18 different articles were found in the systematic review and the majority of them that looked at sensory attributes over 65% found an increase in sensory attributes. However, with regards to the secondary metabolites, the evidence was mixed, um, which really points to the need to fu for future research to understand what are the specific composition of secondary metabolites that ultimately determine specific sensory profiles. This research also showed how lower elevation areas are more vulnerable to shifts in coffee quality and the need very much to 
highlight or to identify suitable locations at higher elevations for coffee quality. However, this is not always feasible and so we need to turn our attention to other management factors that we can modify for mitigating the effects of climate effects on coffee quality at lower elevations. And one of these mitigation factors, adaptation factors, is linked to managing light exposure based on shade within coffee systems. So another compelling piece of evidence that was elucidated through the systematic review was how increased light exposure overall was linked to decreased coffee quality. Um, this was both in terms of sensory attributes as well as specific secondary metabolites, including the polyphenolic antioxidant compounds, as well as caffeine, which is a methylxanthine and other alkaloids. And what was also very interesting in the studies, and there was 19 studies that looked at light exposure and coffee quality, was the nonlinear response of coffee quality to light exposure. So it wasn't just the case that increased shade exposure results in increased quality, but rather there is a threshold above which coffee quality then begins to decline. And so further research is really needed to begin to understand what that threshold is and how it varies at different elevations and in different geographies. Shade management also emerges as a really promising potential for climate resilience based on evidence in the literature of how shade grown systems can foster multiple ecological agricultural attributes including fostering biodiversity, supporting ecosystem services, and because of the support of ecosystem services, there's less of a need to add agrochemical inputs and thus overall greater ecological resilience and sustainability. The other compelling evidence emerged with regards to geography. So 31 different articles looked at the effects of variation in geography to coffee quality. And at this time, we're not able to see or say if an increase in latitude and longitude uh, results in a specific direction of a shift in coffee quality. We need to take a deeper dive into the data from the systematic review to be able to address that. But what we can say at this time is that geography location is very much linked to providing a chemical signature on secondary metabolic profiles as well as sensory profiles. And this really begins to um, point to the fact that coffee quality is very much vulnerable in those locations if we are craving a specific taste of that terroir, that that terroir may shift with other environmental factors. And so again, a need to begin to understand how can we mitigate um, different variables in different locations. And then with regards to other factors, including temperature, Increased temperature was found to impact coffee quality. However, the evidence is very mixed in regards to directionality. And so some studies found increased sensory attributes while other studies found decreased sensory attributes. Likewise, some phytochemicals or secondary metabolites increased while others decreased. And so this very much is an area for future research. Similarly, with water stress, some studies found an increase in coffee quality with regards to sensory attributes with increased water stress, um, also an increase in specific phytochemicals, but overall the evidence was mixed. There were more studies that showed increased sensory attributes and increased specific secondary metabolites with increased water stress. However, because the evidence was mixed, it's really hard to make strong claims about the effects of water stress on coffee quality. And this is again another area for future research. Also to identify what are those thresholds beyond which coffee quality no longer improves with increased water stress. And with regards to nutrient management, likewise, nutrient management is plays a very important role in managing or mitigating or influencing coffee quality. However, no clear trends were found in our systematic review. 
Again, another area for future research. And likewise, type of cultivar, the influence of pest and disease, the practice of fruit thinning and increased carbon dioxide um, that impact coffee systems, also all showed shifts in coffee quality. However, we're not able to make strong claims about the directionality of these changes in coffee quality. And a lot of this has to do with how there is a lack of standardization in what constitutes or how different studies measure coffee quality. So again, another area for future research. Another thing I wanted to highlight with regards to these different studies is that the shifts in coffee quality um, are, we looked at the directionality, but in some cases where we had quantitative information, we also looked at the percentage of shift in amount. And in some cases, there was a shift in coffee quality in response to these different environmental and management factors over 50%. And so now I wanted to turn my attention to what is not known. What did, this inter what did the systematic review tell us with regards to critical research areas that need to be examined going forward to support the sustainability and resilience of the coffee sector? We looked at these different factors, these different environmental and management factors individually, but in the real world, all of these factors are related. They are interacting with each other, as you know. And thus, it's really critical to begin to understand how these different factors interact with each other. In a field setting and case studies, this really presents confounding influence. And thus, there is a need for more research that's done in very controlled, manipulative environments to understand how different variables are interacting with each other. So, in conclusion, based on the findings of this systematic review, we can say that coffee quality is vulnerable to shifts in environmental factors linked to climate change and is also sensitive to shifts in management factors linked to climate adaptation. And so overall, the systematic review has shown that there is an urgent need for evidence-based climate resilience innovations based on additional research, including some of the literature gaps, research gaps that I shared with you today towards supporting coffee quality in addition to yield and innovations from farm to cup. From the studies that we reviewed, some of those promising innovations include diversification, shade management, tapping into wild coffee germaplasm, climate selection of climate resilient cultivars, soil nutrient management, looking to see if there is possible relocation to higher elevations. Of, of course, this is not feasible in many cases, a lot of barriers for that. And then what are innovations in processing and in brewing that can actually serve to mitigate some of the impacts that the environment is having on secondary metabolites. And when we're thinking about really managing for coffee quality, not only do we wanna to adapt to what's happening with climate change, we wanna actively mitigate climate change itself through enhanced sustainability practices.